It made no sense to me whatsoever. I have tons of friends who dive these fins. Every dive boat I'm on, I'm seeing at least one pair of these fins. They're a classic design. Lamar, founder of Dive Right, told me they have sold tens of thousands of pairs of XT fins. So what was I doing wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button, because we make videos here to make you a better, more well-informed scuba diver. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of an unconventional dive gear review, sort of a, you know, a departure from our usual review style, if you want, because I, I want to look at the my experiences with the Dive Right XT fins, and I'm still going to tell you what I like and dislike about these fins, but I'm also going to share with you or illustrate the who do I think these fins are best suited for bit first by using the story of my time with this exact pair of XT fins from Dive Right. To illustrate, a point that I've made in countless other videos. This video is not sponsored, although I was sent these fins by Dive Right for free. Now, last summer, prior to going on the sardine run, Dive Right sent me a big, generous box of gear. Dive Right were a title sponsor of the film that we made in South, in South Africa, Run Sardine Run. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up above there. And I wanted to thank them, of course, by featuring as many of their products as possible in the video. I get this shiny new pair of XT fins. Cool. I see people diving them all the time. I had never tried them out. I was super stoked to test them. So in my kit bag they went and off to South Africa we went. Of course, we get to South Africa and we're chasing these bait balls, which most of which are in the top 10 feet of water. And most of the filming is done on snorkels from the surface and we're free diving and we're chasing, chasing, chasing. These bait balls are not static. What you've got to realize is they're traveling horizontally at a phenomenal speed to avoid predators. And the dolphins are coming in and this, you know, it's a lot of action. And you need to keep up, especially dragging a massive camera through the water. Now, after two solid days of flutter kicking, trying to keep up with pods of hunting dolphins, my calves were like granite and my knee joints were on fire. I was sprained and strained. And of course, I blamed the fins. But clearly, these fins are not made for sprint flutter kicking. I was using the wrong tool for the job. But like an idiot, I came home and I put the XT fins on a shelf and I kind of swore off of them. That is until I started CCR diving again in January of this year. The CCR I dive is very ass heavy. There's a lot of weight around the lower section. There's a stainless steel frame with a big lumbar region and all of the first stage regulators are down low, the transmitters, all that good stuff. So I wanted lighter fins so as not to add more weight below my midpoint. But they also had to be stiff enough to provide enough thrust to power me plus the whole ensemble through the water. Looking at my options, my huge range of fins that I've got on the wall over there, I went for the XTs because they seemed like a natural choice. And sure enough, they worked out perfectly. I can do a two hour dive without a DPV, frog kicking the whole way and have zero cramp or leg fatigue. Look, my point being, I'm an idiot. I took a perfectly good pair of fins and misused them and then was surprised that I didn't like them. I jumped from configuration this to configuration that, doubles, single tank, CCR, that of course I don't have a one fin to rule them all solution for all my styles of diving. This is advice I've talked about in other videos and I really should listen to myself. So if I can, before we get into the actual review part of this video, I would like to pass on the advice to you that, you know, fins probably aren't the most expensive part of your kit. They're not as much as computers or regulators or so on. So if you find yourself frustrated at your fins, it's probably because you're using the one, wrong ones for the wrong job. Go out and get a second pair of different style fins that may be better for whatever kind of diving you're moving into now. All right, so what do I love about these fins? First off, light, yeah, monoprene, happy days. But 
still stiff, not floppy like the travel fins that I've got, still tech rated fins. For frog kicking, which is of course my default kick when not trying to chase a pod of dolphins, these are super thin and slice horizontally through the water and just the slightest rotation of the ankle presents a nice large blade surface area to push off of, which makes them very, very efficient. I love the spring strap. I love that it now articulates. The older versions didn't. And I love that you can adjust the sizing up or down by moving the pin. So if you switch from like a three mil wetsuit boot to a five mil wetsuit boot, you can make that subtle adjustment without having to buy new fins. So that's fantastic. The springs for me have just the right amount of tension for being secure, but still easy to get off. Um, they do not come loose in currents. I've dove these fins in incredibly strong currents and they are very, very firm on the foot, but also you don't have to struggle to remove them while you're trying to hang on to a boat ladder and get your fins off. I'm also a big fan of this subtle little finger tab on the heel that you can just dig your fingertip under and grip to remove the fin strap. Um, it's easy to get hold of, but unobtrusive to your streamlining. Some fins you see, they have this big loop on the back and they're just not very hydrodynamic, whereas this is a good balance between the two. The grip on the soles is perfect for rocking boat decks. I feel secure standing in these fins with the rubber pads on the soles. Um, from a durability point of view, I know I've got probably, well, I know I've got at least 55 dives on these fins exactly. And yeah, the monoprene's a little bit scruffed up and banged up in places. To be honest, I'd be disappointed if they weren't because it means I hadn't given them a thorough testing. But apart from that, they are as strong as new. So what do I think could be improved if Dive Right do decide to revisit these classic fins? Well, there are very few changes that I would suggest. What Dive Right could choose to do is, and following a modern trend that we're seeing, uh, is use the same mold that they use to make the XT, in other words, the same shape for all the different sizes, but use a higher density monoprene, a heavier version of the same design, uh, and in order to trim out people that don't want light fins and want a little bit more trim to keep them head down, particularly if you're diving, you know, a heavy manifold, it's always nice to have slightly heavier fins. But apart from that, I've gone from being frustrated by these fins to actually kind of loving them. And now I'm using them for the right job. Things have gotten a lot better. The XT fins are a solid choice if you need thrust, but you don't want to add weight to your ankles. They're a great option when you want strength over speed. They're a solid choice if you predominantly use the frog kick like all competent divers do. As always, I will place my affiliate link to the XT fins in the video below, and I appreciate your support. Thanks as always for watching our review of the XT fins from Dive Right. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in the next video. Dive safe, dive often.